My Doctor, your health anytime, anywhere. Hello, lovely people. Welcome to the My Doctor podcast. My name is Mercy Gajoy. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for always tuning in. Yeah, so this is basically a health podcast and we talk about health all aspects of health want you to live a healthy life yeah so for today we are here with dr yakub i'll give him a chance to introduce himself and we're going to be having a series of um episodes we're going to be talking about metabolic syndrome today then we'll, we'll go into substance abuse like alcohol what does alcohol do to, to your body we'll go into um things like exercising what is a balanced diet so just stay tuned because we have a lot in store for you so welcome dr yakub Thank you, Joy. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's, my name is Dr. Yakub. Uh, I'm a medical doctor, behavioral scientist, digital health expert. Uh, I am the co-founder and team lead of Vigilant Living, promoting healthy living, uh, as well as passionate about health coaching. Yes. Thank you so much. So someone, before we go into the, into the topic, someone could be wondering the accent. Are you from Uganda? Where are you from? Well, I can say not born in Uganda, but adopted within <laughs> Uganda. <laughs> yes. So I'm from Horn of Africa, uh, Ethiopia, but I have been in Uganda for the last decade now plus. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So um, today's topic, we're going to be talking about metabolic syndrome. And uh, in layman language, someone could maybe associate it with obesity, something like that. Like that. So I want you to probably um, tell us what metabolic syndrome is to start with for someone to understand what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, metabolic syndrome, even beginning with the word, what is metabolic or metabolism mm -hmm. uh, from biology? Uh, it is just a process of energy intake and energy usage. So metabolic syndrome or even what you call metabolic disorders are d diseases which come out when there is a mismatch between how much energy we consume and how much energy we use. So in natural, that's what we say. It's metabolic diseases. Now, metabolic syndrome or syndrome X is a combination of different symptoms and uh, signs which collectively are called metabolic syndrome. Yes. Yeah. By, by uh, when you say the energy we consume and and give out what do you mean because i think there's so many types of energy people keep talking about these days uh, mental energy what so what energy are you talking about okay so the human body just like um, any other living organism and even even non-living objects like a car need, needs fuel to function mm -hmm. so that's why we as humans consume food primarily as a way to get energy for us to function so and then we use that energy to do to walk, to um, exercise, to, you know, whatever we do as a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah so in simple terms, you're, you're taking in a lot, but you the energy you're using is less. It could be that way. It could be that you are taking m more, so you are, or, you are, or you are exercising less, yeah. so you are using the energy less. Or it, ideally, it's both, combination of both. Okay, yeah. okay. So now let's go into like the components and make a metabolic syndrome. How can someone know that they could be tending to metabolic syndrome? Yeah, of okay. course. So, of course, the most obvious one is what we call obesity or overweight. Uh, how we measure that one, we have the body mass index, the BMI, uh, which says if you are above 25, ideally we say you're overweight. And if you're above 30, we say you're obese. However, that BMI has uh, an in inaccuracies because someone who is highly muscular, for example, uh, Gololo Moses, can appear to be overweight or even obese, though he's not. So the more accurate one is the one which we call the waist circumference, which is now measured in the waist circumference. For men, it's supposed to be less than 101 centimeters. For women, it's supposed to be less than 90 centimeters so meaning actually i think that people can even like measure themselves you know those tape measures like exactly. actually go find a tailor <laughs> if you don't have a tape measure and measure your waist circumference yeah. and see if you above that then this video might be for you anyway yeah, okay exactly. so, so if you're going to do that you just make sure you put it around the navel region just above the hips okay. so that the hips do not count okay. it is just here yeah, above that Okay, and then for the BMI, how, how can someone calculate that if they would want to? Yeah, BMI is just uh, you go and we calculate you go and measure your weight, and then you divide by your height squared. Mm. So you can use your phone. Actually, there are apps you can just Google. So as long as you have your weight measurement, then your height it will calculate for you. So if you're above twenty five, then 
problems. Problems yeah. are starting to come in. Okay, and then the other components. So problems. the other four is we also have hypertension or high blood pressure. Of course, that one you also measure. Uh, there's also what you call high levels of uh, in, uh, glucose, or though it might not necessarily be diabetic levels, but just high levels of, of glucose. Uh, the other two is to do with the cholesterol of the body. One is what we call the bad cholesterol, which will be high. Or for example, there's the LDL, low density lipoproteins. At the same time, there will be reduced good cholesterol or high density cholesterol, mm. HDL, lipoprotein. So those five are what we call, uh, so we say if someone has three out of five, you say you have metabolic syndrome. Okay, so um, we've understood what metabolic syndrome is. So I'd want us to talk about how, how if someone is like in that state that we have talked about, how did they get there? Someone could be out there and they're wondering, how did I get here? What caused this? Or if someone does not go, they want to tend into that direction. What are some of the causes of metabolic syndrome? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, the kind of uh, practice of medicine, let me say within Uganda, within Africa, uh, to some extent focuses mainly on acute illnesses. So we still deal with malaria, HIV, maybe maternity and child health. But what you call chronic diseases or non-communicable diseases, the diabetes, the hypertension, the strokes, the heart diseases, and even cancers are becoming more rampant. Uh, the rates are becoming high, but the healthcare system is not actually towards it. So this question gives me a chance to explain when you look at these diseases, they all come together in a sense. You don't just get hypertension on its own. It is rare. In Uganda, 15 million Ugandans, almost 30% of the population, have one or more non-communicable disease. So they go together. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have talked about um, taking a lot of energy, taking a lot of food, uh, as well as not using that energy. So the energy keeps on accumulating in the body. So when we have a lot of that sugars, which we have taken, <coughs> it accumulates in the body, that leads to what we call insulin resistance. So the body stops listening to insulin. Insulin is the hormone which drives the energy from the blood towards the cells of the body to use it. So in case that hormone, the body is not responding to it, we get what we call metabolic syndrome and even diabetes. Yeah. So what, what is it all foods... Or, okay, before we even go, go there, because you're talking about how someone is taking in a lot of food. Yeah. But then I feel like some people, um, you, you can find someone, they are kind of obese. Mm. They are obese, but they want to stop eating, but they can't stop eating. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Yeah. I don't want to do KFC. I don't want to, I don't want to eat, but I cannot live if I've not eaten four four meals of junk food in a day i will not be fine so what like how can they like what's that what's mm. happening yeah, yeah yeah that's a that's a, that's a complex uh, truth personally i was someone who was overweight really just few three four years ago i i was close to 100 kg so i do have the first person experience mm. uh, the reason why you can say there are a lot of factors one of it is uh, to do with our genetics mm. let me say put it this way if, uh, let me say, we as Africans to some extent grew up in a society, an environment which had quite uh, food, it, we had food, uh, natural food to some extent, so our bodies were not really uh, ready for this processed food. This processed food is a Western diet to some extent. Mm -hmm. So that introduction means it's like um, the body is already programmed to go and eat food because we eat food to survive. So now we are seeing food which has high levels of sugar. So in case your grandfather who maybe was working hard to get food, still we have the same brain. So the body will still feel they has to eat as much food as possible because who knows tomorrow there may be starvation. Mm -hmm. So the body knows that it has to eat. And at the same time, these companies which manufacture food or process food, make sure they use scientists who keep on adding additive substances. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the food are highly addictive processed, they have um, maybe cheese, there's a lot of oils. So they're also hacking our brain to make sure we come back to KFC or Cave Chavas every day. So it is a, it's quite a chaos. Yeah. Okay. So apart from the from the food and everything, are there some people that are at risk? Because we've talked about genetics, meaning some people could be genetically uh, predisposed to metabolic syndrome. So are there other risk groups like 
if so, if you if you have mm-hmm. if you have this type of thing then you should be careful you could easily mm-hmm. get into metabolic syndrome yeah yeah so in general uh, genetics is there um there are people who probably are highly uh, likely to get diabetes hypertension especially if maybe their parents uh, or even their grandparents had even cancers for that matter but at the same time the way i like to describe uh, genetics we say genetics puts the bullet in the gun but lifestyle shoots the gun yes so just in a sense you can say we're all predisposed to these conditions so you have to make sure you don't get it whether it is maybe family history or not you have to put the effort they do not discriminate yeah okay so and and then what of like things like alcohol blah blah do they also play a role in metabolic syndrome Yes, good question. Indeed, yes, alcohol plays a role. In fact, the f- four main uh, risk factors recognized by WHO, we, we have already mentioned two, unhealthy diet and sedentary lifestyle, no exercise. The other two is high levels of alcohol consumption and then tobacco smoking. So those four are the main recognized uh, risk factors for these NCDs. Okay, so yeah. we've been talking about metabolic syndrome. How common is it? Is it really common? Because uh, cause someone could um, have, you talked about the West circumference, the obesity, but there's also this um, notion that you can be, I can be looking slim, but I'm fat on the inside. I don't know if you've heard of that. So are those people also, can they can they be, are they unhealthy? Yes, How can yes. you know that you're fat on the inside? Because I could think I'm okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I think there was a paper which came out uh, last year or was it early this year? I don't know if it was Daily Monitor, which showed half of ladies in Kampala are off way to obese. Huh? Yes, so there was a paper which came out. But at the same time, the, the way that second question you asked, someone can actually look small, but they are, they could be uh, having metabolic syndrome. And there's a reason why more men get these conditions than women. However much we say women huh, have more weight. So to answer that question is, there's a difference between what we call the fat mass, so having a lot of fat in the body, as well as having fat cells which are huge. And men might not have a lot of fat in the body, but the fat cells which they have are bigger. So that's why men or people who can, even though they look smaller, they could actually be having even diabetes for that matter. Yeah. And then also about the waist circumference, because we're doing like, we said above, around the navel area. Yeah. But then now there are some people who, may, let me talk about the men, eh? he's a bit slim, but he has a big abdomen. I don't want to say, because people say big stomach, but he has a big abdomen. Does that also count? Yeah, in fact, that's the most important one. That fat you get in the stomach, which is what you can also call visceral fat, is far more dangerous than the other fats in a sense, because that area can contain a lot of fat mm-hmm. because it has a lot of cells. So even the fat goes and starts covering the liver, it starts covering the the stomach areas, it starts covering the pancreas mm-hmm. because there's a lot of space there. So that's why we say waist circumference. Mm-hmm. It's far more accurate than even just the body it's mass brilliant. index. Yeah. Meaning a lady who who is slim up yeah. and and blessed down may not fall under metabolic syndrome. Perhaps, perhaps. perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. So yeah. as we as we conclude this particular episode, um, what are some of the things that someone can do if they're already there and they're watching this? What advice would you give them? We're going to go into details in the next episodes, but like just in a nutshell, what advice would you give them? How can they be helped? How can they come out of that obesity? Bit All, right. All right. Yes. Uh, so as you have mentioned, we shall discuss them one by one. But the five main things, uh, lifestyle change, we all have to do. To avoid these conditions as well as even if you have conditions even if you have diabetes today even if you have hypertension even cancers especially early stage cancers you can still manage it through doing these five things changing your your diet taking balanced diet making sure you move around you just move not even exercise just moving around uh, sleeping well managing stress and lastly reducing taking alcohol and if, if you have been smoking that one you should even stop it to begin with stop alcohol today. maybe yes but smoking yes yes smoking stop it yeah okay thank you so much dr Yakub, for this um we'll be discussing i think substance abuse next week so for those who are watching metabolic syndrome is really a pitfall that you don't want to get yourself into and um even if you're not yet there 
if you you're doing the things that we're talking about the five things the substance abuse you're smoking you're taking alcohol or you are overeating processed foods uh, we're not saying stop we're going to have a, a deficit on diet don't worry but you should regulate have a balanced diet things like living a sedentary lifestyle you don't you can't even take the stairs I may be a victim, but you can't even take the stairs. You just want, you can't walk. So we're going to be talking about all that in detail, but um, you should just work on your lifestyle, be healthy. We don't want you to go into, into that pit hole of metabolic syndrome or obesity because it comes with almost all the NCDs. It comes with cancers. It comes with a lot. And we want you to enjoy your, your money as you go. Old. We don't, we don't want you to be in the hospital, right? So yeah, so thank you so much for watching this episode. We're going to be having more episodes on these lifestyle changes that you can do. We want you to be very healthy and yeah, enjoy yourself as you go old. Yeah. So thank you so much. This is a My Doctor podcast. My Doctor, your health anytime, anywhere. My Doctor, your health anytime, anywhere.